Whew. What's in my camera bag? Summer of 2018. Coming at ya. What's up everybody? I'm the Everyday Dad. If I can figure it out, you can figure it out. My camera gear is always evolving. I'm always trying to figure out ways to improve my workflow and what works for me may not work for you, but let's talk about what's inside my camera bag this summer because it has changed since we did this video last spring. Plus we've gained like 10,000 extra subscribers and if you're one of those 10,000 people, you might be curious what's new. So first up you can see here, instead of the Brevet rucksack from last time, which congratulations to Jim Hightower for winning that at one of our giveaways. So instead of that, I use my normal Low Pro, this is a BP something, I don't exactly know. I bought this at Best Buy. And the reason I got this color is, because sometimes when you're out filming in the woods, you don't want like a big vibrant color. When you just like take your stuff and go filming, you want to stash your bag somewhere, you want it to be inconspicuous so somebody doesn't like walk off with your with your life's worth of camera expensive gear. So. I like this color. This is a really strong, really strong material. It's been great. I beat it up all the time. But let's talk this front flap right here. So if you want to see any in-depth videos of all the gear I'm going to talk about today, chances are I've made a video about it, and you can see that in the links below. So the Galaxy S9, my favorite mobile filming platform. This is one of my favorite cameras of all time. And I don't just mean cell phone cameras. I mean regular cameras, too. We'll talk more about my main shooters that are, you know, filming right now. But I love this camera. That's all for the outside. Let's talk about what's gonna stabilize that mobile filmmaking platform. And that is the DJI Osmo Mobile 2. You know, I've tried out some extra gimbals since the Osmo Mobile 2's come out. I've tried out the Moza Mini Me, I've tried the Smooth 4, I've tried all sorts of cell phone gimbals. And to this day, the Osmo Mobile 2 is still my favorite. It's just so easy to use. It's so easy to balance. It's just quick, it's great. I wish the app worked a little better with Android. That's probably the biggest negative about it, but stabilizing footage is a big deal for me. Since this Galaxy S9 does the majority of my family filming, this is my majority family stabilizer, so this combination, so good. Okay, that is, oh, that's junk. That is, oh, and we went to Mount Vernon. Okay, that is it for the flaps. Let's talk about my tripod. This is brand new since the last time. This is the Manfrotto be free. So basically what this is, it's a travel tripod with a fluid head, which lets you take nice pans and tilts and get a lot of nice movement in your videos wherever you go. It's not the most stable tripod I own. The most stable tripod I own is the Ravelli something that weighs like 30 pounds. It's made of like solid metal and it's heavy as heck. Super stable. If you're trying to get some out of house shots and you just want a good tripod to get you fluid smooth motion no matter where you're going, the Manfrotto Be Free, pretty good. I don't have a video on that one. If you want to see some videos on it, let me know if there's some accessories in this video that you haven't seen and you want to see a video on, you know, leave a comment below and we'll, maybe I'll make a video about those too. Okay, let's get to the almost main attraction because the main attraction for me, because I love watching creator gear videos, so the main attraction to me is the cameras and they're, they're filming right now, but we'll get to those in just a second. So the next, the next almost main attraction inside the bag, okay. So first up, this doesn't this isn't necessarily in my camera bag, but I've gotten a lot of requests to talk about it. This is my teleprompter. This is a Parrot teleprompter. So basically what you do, you put your phone in here, there's an app you run. Can you guys Can you guys see that? And then you hit play. And there you go. That's how you can do your script without uh, messing up because I mess up a lot. So it's nice to This cuts down on so much of my editing time because it saves a lot of takes that I would normally ruin. Okay, let's talk about the most important part of video production is audio, and my main audio, we'll talk about here in another second when we start showing this setup, is my Rode VideoMic Pro Plus, that's what you're hearing right now. But some other additional audio I use, so I use the Rode Link wireless lavalier system when I'm out and about, and I have a camera that takes an audio in. They're really great when you're not gonna be like directly in front of a camera. They are just, they're super high quality. The battery lasts forever. You can run into transmission issues if you're in like an area that has a lot of like signal noise, but I've never done that. I've never had an issue. These are great. Now, if you're using a camera like my Sony RX100 Mark VI, like this guy right here, uh, it doesn't have an audio in. So what do you do? Because the, you know, the camera microphones are generally pretty terrible. You use something like the Zoom H1N here, which is just an off-camera recorder. I really like this. It's super lightweight. The batteries also last forever. The preamps on this thing are pretty good. And when I plug it into my lav mic, it sounds awesome. And if you've seen any of my videos over the last couple of days filming on the RX100 Mark VI, all of the good audio comes from this thing. I highly recommend these two. It's only like a hundred bucks. Being able to use this to get off-camera audio, so good. Okay, oh, yep, and then we've also got 
you know, the lavalier mics and the uh, attachments. Okay, something that we've talked about quite a bit, and I don't really need it as much anymore, are battery life. So, I carry around spare batteries for the RX100 Mark VI and my action camera we'll talk about here in a second. Uh, this used to be full of batteries because I used to need a whole bunch of batteries, but since switching to the A7 III, uh, I only ever use the one. I've never bought a second battery for my A7 III, which is pretty crazy considering I have batteries just all over the place. The Z battery in the A7 III, good. So I only carry around two extras. I probably will downgrade this case pretty soon. This is the case for the RX. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So we talked about my favorite big tripod, but this is the Manfrotto Mini. This is the Manfrotto Pixie. And for just a little tripod to maybe just like hook up to a camera if you're doing some like vlogging stuff, or you just want something to be at like table level and you don't want to set up the huge tripod, this thing is actually really great. It's got the little articulating ball head that you can move around. I really like this thing, it's super sturdy. It works as like a defensive weapon if you need it to. Pretty, pretty good. Stable footage is important. What else is in here? We got the lens cap and the body cap for my a7 III. And we've got one of the most versatile cameras ever made. I even made a video about it. The Sony FDR X3000, my favorite action camera. I always carry this thing around with me because it has some of the best stabilization ever made on any camera system. It's really good. It sounds good when plugged with the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus. This is, if I wanna vlog, I'm gonna use this thing because it's so easy to use, it's so lightweight, the stabilization is so good, and when you put the audio in, cause it's got an audio in jack, like one of the only action cameras to have an audio in jack, it's just so darn good. If this, if they could create one of these with a one inch sensor, I might not need any other camera ever. Did you hear that, RX? Oh, a one inch sensor on the FDR would be magical. Magical. I've also got a bunch of random other stuff here. Like I've got this articulating arm, uh, just cause you never know when you need to like, I don't know, have other stuff attached to each other in other ways. I use this a lot and uh, it's actually pretty important. I've got some extra GoPro like mounts and stuff just cause anytime I'm with an action camera or I like attaching stuff to my drones, which uh, you'll actually, you'll notice a lack of drone in this camera bag right now. And that's because when I go out filming anymore, I don't bring my drone cause it's not easy for me to fly drones here in the Washington DC area. So I only bring the drone if I'm specifically making a drone video. It kind of stinks that I can't bring them around anymore. We gotta, hopefully the laws will get fixed soon. I carry around an Allen wrench, cause sometimes we gotta work on the cage that we'll talk about here in a second. And just an additional like a cell phone holder. And this works with the Manfrotto Pixie. In the same vein as the never have enough batteries, you can never have enough memory. Nothing drives me more crazy than showing up and having my SD cards full. So I always carry around two or three extra SD cards. Okay, so let's talk about the cameras themselves. First up, let's talk about my B camera. Now my B camera has changed so much in the last two months. We could probably make a video next week and it's gonna change again. I had the A6500, it was driving me crazy. I switched to the Canon M50. The Canon M50 is awesome, but it didn't really do the slow motion I needed out of a B camera. I had the GH5, which is one of my favorite cameras, but I wasn't using it to its full extent, so I sold that. Now we're trying out the RX100 Mark VI, which honestly is a fantastic little camera. It is almost entirely like a mobile video production studio in your hand. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there that complain about the low light capabilities. It doesn't have an ND filter like the Mark V. There are some things about it that are not as good, but the 200 millimeter zoom range is awesome. And it's really darn good. The hybrid log gamma profile on this really gives this some low light punch. I do have the RX100 Mark V Alpha coming next week, so maybe this will change in a week, but I really do like this. I'm really, really impressed with this, and darn, it's a good camera. I don't think it deserves the hate it gets, because this thing is really, really good, but will this win, or will the RX100 Mark V Alpha win? You'll have to stay tuned next week to find out about that, but let's talk about the main shooter and the main audio. So the main audio, so the main audio that you can see right here is the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. This is one of my favorite microphones of all time. It does all sorts of great things. It has a rechargeable battery. You don't have to buy batteries to put in this. And the battery life lasts forever. I've had this thing for three months. I've charged it once. And I use this thing almost every single day. It is incredible. It's also got some additional settings like you can change the, you can put a high pass filter on it. You can increase the decibel ratings on it. I really, really like this. I highly recommend this. Okay, now let's get to the main event. And that is the Sony a7 III. 
So I love the Sony a7 III. It's one of my favorite cameras of all time. You can see right there the setup I have for it. If you want to see more about this setup, you can check the video again in the description below. I've done a whole video on both the monitor, the cage on it, the camera itself. I've made like 30 videos on. It is, it is no kidding, like my favorite camera of all time. It does a beautiful 4K 30 frames per second. It does, it does 1080p at 120 frames per second without a crop. It is so good. And attached to it, like 99.9999% of the time, is the Sony 28mm f2 lens. It is, mm, gives you that nice blurry, blurry background. It gives you that nice blurry background. And this is in crop mode. So it's cropped in right now. It's more like a 35, 40 millimeter. So it's not getting as blurry as it could get, but it's pretty good. I love this setup. I love everything about it. So this is my current setup for summer of 2018. What is your, shoot me a comment below or even tweet at me. What is your current setup for your online content creation? I'm very curious. I love seeing what others are using for their creation, so let me know. Thanks for watching.